everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Kirsty, aka Kbeth Bookish, and on today's video, I'm launching a new reading challenge for myself called the Buzzword Bingo. I've been mulling this idea for a couple of years now of looking at what my buzzwords are. And then Jade from JD Ray Reads recently did a video where she's done this. She's looked at her buzzwords, made a bingo board. I said to Ren that I was wanting to do a similar concept, only I wanted to include some of my anti buzzwords as well. And that inspired Ren, who also has done a bingo board. So please go check both of their videos out as well. What I'm gonna do for mine is I'm gonna talk through each of the squares. We're not gonna be here for like super long talking about each book and each square. It's just gonna be, I'll tell you what the books are and then for each square, I will talk, I will give you a book that I have read that I enjoyed from that category. Between one and three books on my current TBR that fit that box. And then basically I just thought I'll give myself a year and try and complete the bingo. And because I don't wanna start every single challenge I ever do in January, I thought mid year, good starting point and take ticks me through. So, this is my bingo board. I have three colour categories on here. We have the regular standard sort of beigey colour. This is my buzzwords. We have the sort of lightish pink, which are my meh words. They can be hit or miss for me. And then we have like this dark pink, light pinky red colour. And that are those are anti-buzzwords. There are more for all of these that I could have included, but you know, it's already 35 squares long. We don't need to be here for a century. Let's just jump straight into it. And our first box, demons. I love me some demons. I, I just, there's something about them. They captivate me. I really enjoy them. And I love like the darkness that they promise and all of that kind of thing. And I just, demons are great. <laughs> I mean, they're not, but they are. Books that I have read with demons, we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and also Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. And on my TBR with books featuring demons, I have the sequel to it, which is Mysteries of Thorn Manor because, you know, Silas, demon. And then we also, this one's a bit literal, but King of Scars, it literally says, face your demons. And then I also have Demon Prince by Karen Kinsey on my Kindle. Next up, we have a an, an anti-buzzword, which is sea or underwater. I'm not a fan of the ocean. I love seeing it. It's very, very pretty. Do I want to go near it? Not really. I go to the beach. I sit where I can watch everything without having to interact. And the idea of being on a boat terrifies me. The idea of going underwater terrifies me. I don't even like going on bridges in tunnels that go underwater. Just nothing to do with that. It No. But that means I also tend to struggle with books that are set on the seas, so ships and things like that. But I have had a couple of exceptions. So To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. It's a siren book and it's mostly set on sea and on boats and sailing around. And I didn't think I would enjoy it for those reasons because sirens and mermaids kind of fall into that anti-buzz as well. But I really enjoyed this one and it is on my list of books that I want to reread this year. And then ones that I haven't yet read, we have The Stranded by Sarah Daniels. She's actually a friend of mine. I'm, we've been in the same writing group for a long time now. And I'm so, so proud of her for publishing. But at the same time, unfortunately, I've read some of this. I haven't completed it yet, but it's all stuff I don't enjoy, unfortunately. It's sort of like a pandemic, it's illness, it's a boat, it's got sort of factions. It's all the things that tend to not really draw me in. But because she is a friend, I do plan on reading this. And another one we have is The Isle of Storms and Sorrows. Isles of Storm and Sorrow, Viper by Bex Hogan. And if you are smart savvy and remember the board, the neck, this one also can fit into the next category, which is Storm. I love storms, anything to do with thunderstorms. If I had any sort of magical powers, I would love to have the power to control storms. So again, Isles of Storm and Sorrow fits that. Books I've read with Storm, we have... Where? Oh no, I don't. I should do. I've read them all. 
We have one of my favourite books in the Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh, Archangel Storm. This follows Jason and Mahia. We have the book before this one in the Side Changing series, which is Storm Echo, which is another one that is one of my favourites in the series so far. And another Storm, I have Seasons of the Storm, which is another buzzword that didn't make it into this round, which is Season. Uh, I love sort of seasonal books and books that deal with seasonal and elemental magic, and this one has it. So it's got another one of my buzzwords in. So Seasons of the Storm by Ellie Cosimano. Number four, we have V.E. Schwab, who is absolutely a buzzword of mine. I don't think I've disliked anything that I've read of hers so far, but as we know, Dark Shades of Magic is my absolute favourite. I'm currently rereading it and it is the best of times. And we also, blah, 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 and I've also mentioned Addie LaRue, but I also have on my TBR, I have the Dark Vault, so the Archive and the Unbound duology, and I also have the Fragile Threads of Power, which is the first book in the following follow-up series to Dark Shades of Magic. And if you have not yet seen, she has announced a book that comes out in June of next year, and that is now available for pre-order, and I'm so excited. And the last on this first row is Ravens and Crows. Anything to do with like sort of, you know, the mythology around ravens and crows and their links to death and just their symbology. And if a book has either it in the title or on the cover, I'm going to be drawn to it. One that I've read that I loved, Six of Crows by Nisette B. Schwab. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. And I can't not mention the newest addition to my favourite shelf, The Raven Cycle, The Raven Boys. Not only are they named after ravens and the book series is named after ravens, but there is also a baby raven in the book series. And it's just so cute. I love Chainsaw so, so much. And then books that I need to read with crows or ravens. We have... Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson, which features white ravens. And we have Blackwing by Ed MacDonald, which is called The Raven's Mark and is just such a stunning cover and has a raven on the cover. <laughs> Row two, and we kick off with one of my absolute favourite romance tropes, which is the grumpy sunshine trope. I love this trope. Just the idea of this like really grumpy person who gets gradually turned around and falls in love. So, so good. Ones that I've read with this trope, let's see. Heartless by Elsie Silver. This is book two in the Chestnut Spring series. You just, their dynamic blew me away. I gave it five stars, I absolutely loved it. And I was obsessed with their romance pretty much from page one. And then books on my TBR that I need to read. I have You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry that I googled and it says that it's Grumpy Sunshine. Love Like Farms by BK Borison that is going to be going with me to Australia so I can buddy read it with my love. And Next of Kin by Hannah Bonham Young. I'm not sure which is Grumpy and which is Sunshine because the way it's written it think it might be that she's the Grumpy one and he's the Sunshine. And that is like the ultimate Grumpy Sunshine for me is when she's the Grumpy one and he's the Sunshine. Just yes. Next up we have, you know, the opposite of sunshine, which is death. <laughs> a lot of, there's lots of different ways of looking at death. We can look at it as like following the characters of death and reapers, necromancers I kind of put into this idea of death and murder mystery, things like that. There's so many different ways, but books that I recommend featuring death, we have The Reanimator's Heart by Kari Jorgensen, which was book of the year for me last year. And then for ones that I need to read, I actually have a bit of a stack. So we have Princess of Souls by Alexandra Christo. Death seeks both their souls. Yes, please. Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tuchalk, which is people who basically they're like the advocators of death. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison starts by saying it starts with a death, with death. Terry Pratchett Mort, who becomes Death's assistant. And then just the buzzword, What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Next up we have Alice in Wonderland retelling. I like retellings in general, but my favourite retelling to read and follow is definitely Alice in Wonderland. But ones that I have read and recommend are Alice by Christina Henry, which as you know, is my all time favourite retelling. And A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. And then the one that I can think of 
And then ones that I've got to read, I've got an audiobook of Splintered by A.G. Howard and Alice in the Land of Clovers by B.A. Lovejoy. Next up is what is the first of my meh kind of ones and that is Circus. Things to do with circuses, casinos, acrobats, that kind of dynamic. I either absolutely hate it, Night Circus, or I absolutely love it, aka Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. Mostly it's been a miss, so like I didn't, I liked some elements of Caraval, but I didn't like everything. I liked some elements of Where Dreams Descend, but I didn't like everything. I've got two books that are featuring sort of caravals and carnivals and things like that and circuses and I've got Bacchanal can't remember the other name but I've got Bacchanal and I also have Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. Number 10 is Ghosts. Now Ghosts I just there's again so many different things you can do with them and speaking of Ghosts 16 Souls by Rosie Talbot. I absolutely loved this book. It was all about the ghosts have disappeared and now these two seers need to find them. And the book that I need to read featuring ghosts is the sequel, 12 Bones. Our third row kick starts with another anti-buzzword and that is dragons. I know, please don't come at me. I'm a fantasy reader, but I don't like dragons. I, I've tried a lot of books with dragons in and if they are just sort of, you know, an accepted part of the world and they're sort of almost like the big scary monster thing like Alduin from Skyrim, I'm okay with. It's when they sort of become either the main character or the characters are like dragon riders and they're almost treated like pets or steeds and things like that and they lose their own autonomy. That's when I start to really hate them and more and more and more books these days are going into that sort of vibe and less and more and more away from dragons being their own people and not servant to man. So I kind of have a really weird dynamic with it. That being said, I do have a couple of books that I've read. I'm actually currently rereading Dragonbound by Thea Harrison, which is a dragon shifter. And then ones that I need to read, I've only got a couple, but we have Marauder by L.L. McNeil, which is a self-published indie book. And then in The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I don't know if it actually features dragons, but the fact that it has a leggy wyvern on the front, kind of indicative that maybe it does, and I am interested. Following up with one of my all-time favourites, which is queer romance. I My favourite queer romances tend to be male-male romances, but not when they are overly fetishised or written by women. I like the ones where they're actually written by men. And my favourite of all of these is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Luke and Oliver's relationship was just so, so good and I had the best time. And also it was narrated by Joe Jameson, so we all know how much I love him. And it was just such a good book and definitely my favourite queer romance I think I've ever read. And then ones that I need to read. So we have The Bookshop and the Barbarian by Morgan Stang. And then I have the follow-ups to Delilah Green Doesn't Care. So I have Ir Iris Kelly Doesn't Date and Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. Next up we have Witches. This one a year ago would have been a meh kind of word for me. It wasn't really a buzzword. However, recently I've read some really good witchy books and it's just kind of made me go, okay, I am invested and I am interested now. And one of the books that really got me into it was Wayward by Amelia Hart because even though they're not like your typical fantasy witches, one of the characters in here is actually tried as a witch and it shows these three women throughout the generations of their family and how each one is linked to magic in some way and is in their own way a witch. And it was, for me, such a good, solid read. And then on my TBR, we have The Witches at the End of the World by Chelsea Iverson. Circe by Madeline Miller, which unfortunately is also one of my anti-buzzwords that didn't make it onto this, which is, which is Greek mythology. They're kind of like a bit of a turn off for me, but I am interested and I now own the audiobook as well, so I can't not really. And then we have Waking the Witch by Rachel Birch, who I've read a previous book of hers and I did have a good time with it. Next up, we have what I just generically called stabby stuff. So basically things like dagger, blade, sword, featuring war and battles. Those are the kind of stabby things that I was thinking of. I can't not talk about The Great Coats by Sebastian de Castell. I'm pretty sure we all knew that this was going to come up at some point. But this literally has it all. It's got sword fighting. It has 
battles it has all sorts of things and it hits so many of my keywords that i was like which one do i put it in so i went with stabby stuff and then one's on my tbr that i need to get to we have the follow-up series to the great coats which starts with the prelude of crucible of chaos by sebastian de castell and those above and those below i think the empty throne is the series by daniel polanski i own both of the duology and again it's all about war and battles and fighting and stabby things and it has a sword on the cover so that counts as stabby stuff another one is twins i enjoy sibling dynamics don't get me wrong but there is just something about a set of twins and whether they are in sync with each other and working with each other or they are fighting each other and there's a conflict between them i am just a sucker for that kind of sibling twin dynamic and definitely the one that I have read, definitely Midnight's Twins by Holly Race. I love this one because they are twins. You've got Fern and Ollie were close and then some stuff happened and they start this book with Fern hating slash fearing her brother. And then just throughout the book, their dynamic starts to shift and change because of the situation they're in. And it's just so, so good and so well written. Then we have one, technically it's triplets, not twins, but it kind of has that same thing of they're all born together and the dynamics. And that is Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake, where it's three sisters. And then we have Twin Brothers with The Problem with Perfect by Philip William Stover Twin Brothers, where one is gonna impersonate the other when the other one goes missing. Starting our fourth row with the East Asian. So these are books that are either inspired by East Asian mythology, set in East Asia, so like Japan, Korea, China, that kind of area. And we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikawa, no, by Toshiko, Toshikazu Karaguchi, translated fic, Japanese writer, Japanese story so well done and actually had me crying at the end so definitely all the five stars pretty much every manga is pretty much japanese <laughs> but i especially love samurai dpqo because it's sort of specifically japanese samurai and so it's got that double layer and it's got historical references in there and then books that i need to read that are east asian inspired I have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim as well as Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. And then I have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, which is based off of the story of the Moon Goddess. The next category is Alex E. Harrow. This is an author who came to my attention a couple of years ago when I read 10,000 Doors of January and I wasn't really sure how I felt. Then I read... The Once and Future Witches, which also hits the buzzword of witches and honestly blew me away. Her writing was so, so good and so well done that I fell in love. And I find I still think about the 10,000 Doors of January pretty often. So she's definitely becoming a firm favourite. And then books I have that I've yet to read. I have Starling House, which I literally started last night for the Amazing Readathon. So that one, so far, I'm really enjoying five chapters in. And I also have A Spindle Splintered, which is like a Sleeping Beauty retelling. What? Next up is our second meh kind of work, and that is Pirates. Similarly to Underwater and Ocean, Pirates is another one because of obviously a lot of it is set on the ocean and to do with the sea. I really do sometimes struggle with it, and it's not until recently that I've started to get more into it. A series I loved, which was weird because a lot of it is set underwater, is the Fable series. I've only got the second one. But Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young. I really loved this because I loved... Excuse you! I loved the pirate aspect, but I also really loved the dynamics between everybody and the crew. Also, Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller is one of my favourite series now. And books with pirates. I have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard, where it says a pirate's daughter is one of the characters. I also have Crowns and Swords by J.L. Merrick and Married to a Pirate, which I believe is a sapphic pirate romance by Athena Rose. 
After that, we have Hunter or Hunted. Growing up as a teenager, as a big fan of Supernatural, there's a reason I really love Hunters. And there's probably a reason why so many of these buzzwords are included, because a lot of them are in Supernatural. Just made that connection. But yeah, anything to do with like someone being hunted or someone who is a hunter who's doing hunting. One of my own books that I want to write involves a hunter. So, you know, it, I love that kind of dynamic. And obviously, I'm not going to pull them all down, but we have the Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh. It has Hunter in the title of the series, and I really love it. And then for books that I need to read, we have The Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch, which also has two more of my buzzwords, demon and witch. This one is someone is after him and he doesn't know why because he has amnesia, which I will admit amnesia is one of my anti-words, but in the right setting it can be really good. And this one where he doesn't know why someone is hunting him, why someone's wanting to get him, I kind of think it's going to be a good, ad good one. And then we also have The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed, where, and we have this one where they are being hunted and they're being attacked and things like that. And then I also have God Killer by Hannah Kainer, which features hunting and hunting of gods, and then they themselves find themselves being hunted, which is awesome. Next up we have stars. I love anything to do with the stars. I love to go out into the garden and watch the stars go by. The Conductors by Nicole Glover. This features astrological magic. Like they draw the pattern of the constellation and then it comes to life in the form of magic. So like Leo, when they draw out Leo, a massive lion appears and things and it is so good. And it's also mixed in with like a murder mystery and it's got some historical stuff in there and it was just such a good book. It also had a marriage of convenience where they then start to genuinely fall in love and just... And then books that I need to get to uh where's the cover i have the cover here somewhere where did i put it last night there we go i have the city of stardust by georgia summers and i also have star mother by charlie n holmberg to get to row number five and we are on poison decide about poisons and poisoners and poison stuff that really gets me and i have two that i've read that i want to recommend the first is Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider, where the main character is meant for the gallows, but gets given the opportunity that if she becomes the poison tester for the ruler of the country, she'll be saved. So she learns about poisons. And then we also have one from this year that I gave 4.5 stars to, and that is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron, where it's all about poisonous plants, and then we have A Magic Steeped in Poison, which also fits the Eastern Asian, uh, which also fe fits the East Asian inspired as well. So double box ticking. Yes, please. Next up is plants. And I'm bringing back this Poison Heart because this is all about plants. Both her parents are florists and own their own flower shop. And everything she does and all of her magic is based around plants and plant magic. And then ones that I need to read, we have Gods of the Weirdwood by R.J. Baker, which is set in a fantasy type forest and deals with a lot of plants. And then I have Eastside Hedge Witch, which is to do with plants and plant magic and being a hedge witch and a green witch. Coming up after that, we have my other absolute favourite of the romance genre, and that is fake dating. I am a sucker for fake dating. And then when they start to fall for each other, just yes, please. Thank you very much. And my favourite one, I gave it five stars, is Fake Dates and Mooncakes. Although hilariously, even though it's technically fake dating, thinly veiled that even they forget that it's fake dating. And when they finally come out and tell everyone it was fake dating, everyone's like, shut up. <laughs> no, it's not. And no one believes them. And honestly, as readers, we don't ever believe them that it's fake. But it is so good and I loved it and also it fits the East Asian inspired because it's set around the mid-autumn festival and it gives a lot of cultural references to China and Singapore. And then we have one of my favourite manga of the moment which is Spy Family. They're not really fake dating, they are fake married though so it's another one that's kind of that marriage of convenience. But I have no doubt that at some point they are going to fall in love for realsies even if it's going to take another four years to get there. And then books that I need to read, I have one that I literally picked up two days ago and have started, but you haven't yet finished so it still counts, and that is The Co-op, which is Another Marriage of Convenience by Tara DeWitt. And we also have The Fiancé Farce by Alexandria Belfler. 
Next up we have Royalty. This is another one where up until recently I didn't think I liked it, but then I've read more books with it and I've realised that I actually do like it, it just has to be in the right context for me. And one of my favourites for this, we have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which I loved if you like the more contemporary romance setting. And if you like the more sci-fi fantasy, Cinder and the Lunar Chronicles is pretty much stuffed full of royals everywhere you look. And I have quite a few that I need to get to. They're, I've obviously got... <sighs> I've probably got about 40 books on my TBR that have royalty, but the ones that I've picked out, Love at First Night, which is a disgraced member of the royal family who ends up clashing with a woman at a castle. <laughs> Gwen and Art are not in love is a queer royal romance and a very loose Arthurian retelling. Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes features, well, obviously if you've got a kingdom, you usually have a monarchy there. And Bridget Kemmerer, Defy the Night, one of the main characters is a prince. And then we have another one of my anti-words, which is travel, especially time travel. I cannot stand it. There are very, very few exceptions to where I like this. I also count sort of flashbacks. If a book very has a lot of flashbacks and I'm like, why didn't we just start the book in the past and then bring it to the present? It really frustrates me. So yeah, time travel and books where you spend like 90% of the time traveling and not really doing anything. City of Brass, I kind of got bored because of that. And also In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune, I hated because it just felt like they traveled but did nothing. But one where I felt it really did work well was Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. This features time travel, a family is massacred, these families have been massacred and the two surviving members of the family go back in time to try and sort of resolve things and try and stop it from happening and cause a hell of a lot of chaos along the way and the ending of this left me shooketh. I don't know why but I ran out of storage and then when I look back at the footage my camera for some reason even though when I tested it everything was fine when I actually started filming it it's drop the camera right down so I do apologize hopefully I've adjusted it and I'm now much better in frame I'm not re-recording all of that that I've just done anyway I then have The Summer Seekers by Sarah Morgan which is a road trip one but it's got a young woman and an elderly woman going on a road trip together so I'm like it could be an interesting enough dynamic to keep me invested and then we have The Song That Moves the Sun by Anna Bright, which features a dual timeline, which again, can be hit and miss. I really loved it in Wayward, where they had the three different timelines and how they interwove. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy it in this one as well. Moving on to our penultimate line. And we start with a meh word, and our la uh, which is vampires and werewolves. When I was a teenager, obsessed. Twilight was my obsession. And obviously that led to reading a lot of vampire romance. I remember reading all of the Sucky Stackhouse books. One that I do enjoy and still need to complete the series is Kitty Norville, Kitty in the Midnight Hour, which is a werewolf series and is so, so good. She's a werewolf that has a sort of an agony aunt radio show for the supernaturals, which is fantastic. One's on my TBR, one that is in progress still is Wolf Song by TJ Klune. I will get it finished eventually. And then I picked this one up from a little free library in a local town where it's like they've turned one of the old telephone boxes into a little library. And that is Tate Halloway, Tall, Dark and Dead, where it's a vampire romance. Next up we have Shadow. Anything with the word shadow in, I'm like, ooh, because that usually involves assassins and spies and dark magic. Gathering of Shadows, V.E. Schwab, book two in the Dark Shades of Magic series. And then we also have Girls of Storm and Shadow, which also has Storm in it, by Natasha Nyan, which is book two in the Girls of Paper and Fire series, and again, was just incredible and made me cry. And um, books that I need to read with the word shadow, we have The Shadow of the Wind, Shadows on the Moon by Zoe Marriott, which is an East Asian inspired assassin thing, but it also has royalty in. So again, this one ticks multiple boxes. And then The Beckoning Shadow by Catherine Blair, where she has sort of like this shadow magic and she can warp, turn people's nightmares and biggest fears into reality. Next up we have th the ultimate number one will get me every time in romance and that is Enemies to Lovers. However, as I've said before, Enemies to Lovers does not have a, a extraordinarily rarely actually has a place in contemporary romance. It's at best, it's rivals to lovers. 
otherwise it's just dislike to lovers or one person is a bitch for no real reason to lovers <laughs> but enemies to lovers especially in that fantasy setting yes absolutely my favorite the ultimate for me enemies to lovers yeah captive prince series for me is the ultimate in enemies to lovers they literally go from actively trying to kill each other at first sight to killing for each other by the end and just so good but it's very very heavy on the trigger warning so please look into that before you read it and the ones that i need to read again big stack but we have Radiance by Grace Draven. I know that they're from like enemy factions and Rena said this is their all-time favourite fantasy romance so I will give it a try. Song of Wraith and Ruin. A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Again, they just hate each other and then get together. <laughs> Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Basically, she falls in love with a guy who is everything that she hates and is against. And then Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross is more of a rivals to lovers from what I can see because they're rival journalists. So I don't I don't really see how they're enemies, but it is bright. It literally says here enemies to lovers. So we will give it a go. 29 is Cursed. Originally, I was going to put this in as a met or an anti, but then I realised just how many books I have with curses and cursed characters or cursed in the title. And I was like, I can't really not. Because clearly it must be a buzzword for me to have so many books that have this concept. One that I've read is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. The entire kingdom is cursed and there's like this cursed dark forest involved and it's all like dark magic and it's plants as well so it fits multiple boxes for me. I just missed one out for demons. How could I not mention this for demons? And how could I not mention this for ghosts? <laughs> or death? Ow! That really hurt. <laughs> I mean, I deserved it, but ow. Okay, back to it. Curses that I need to read. We have Gilded and Cursed by Marissa Meyer, which, you know, it's literally written in the title. As is Cursed, which is a an anthology of short stories by various authors, including Christina Henry and Neil Gaiman. And then one that I want to get to soon is Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. And then finally for this row, we have Assassin. And I'm a sucker for anything to do with assassins, like Throne of Glass. I absolutely loved the first book, at least, when we actually focused on the fact that she was an assassin, didn't turn into a little whiny bitch. But... I just, any books like Poison Study is Assassins. We have Woven in Moonlight, which has an assassin. Just a lot of my series have assassins in. Weirdly though, I don't, because I have read so many, I don't have that many on my shelves. But I do have Among Thieves by MJ Kuhn. And I have the Butterfly Assassin, which is more of a sci-fi kind of futuristic type of assassin rather than the typical fantasy assassin and that's why I'm really excited for this one by Finn Longwin. Okay then our final row we are getting there we're nearly at the end we have Christina Henry kicking things off who as you know from what I've already said earlier Alice is one of my all-time favorite books and I've also read The Girl in Red but I own three more of her books I have Good Girls Don't Die which came out last year I have Horseman, which is going to be one that I read for adventure thons next main round, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And then we have The Mermaid, which is obviously The Little Mermaid retelling, and also features P.T. Barnum Circus, so interesting. And then we have number 32, which is Blood. It kind of goes with assassins, stabby things, battles, it'd be kind of... It's kind of obvious that blood would be a thing that I like associated with that because it usually means that that kind of thing will be in the book. Anyway, there we have Blood Marked by Tracy Dion, Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody where it's again all blood magic and it's just a really unique system where your blood, your magic is made up of two different bloodlines. And then ones that I need to read I have The Silver Blood Plum Promise by James Logan and I also have Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan that I will be getting to very soon. 
Then we have my final of the anti-words, which is Peter Pan retelling. If you've been on this channel for any length of time, you will know the pain I have had where I love the idea of Peter Pan retellings. I really, like, certainly the Once Upon a Time storyline with Peter Pan where he's all dark and twisty, I love it. I've read about five Peter Pan retellings now and all of them have been DNFs and two stars. And then there's one that is four stars and that was Lost in the Neverwood by Aidan Thomas. That is the one and only exception but even then I kind of feel like you can't really call it a Peter Pan retelling because even though it had Peter Pan elements and it talked about things, it didn't feel like Peter Pan. It felt like it could have been its own story. So me and my Peter Pan retellings have not gone well. I have one left to try and if this one fails I'm just gonna give up. Oh there's one that Ren really wants me to try but if I don't get on with those I'm just done and that is The Lost Darling by Bailey Black. Then we have Detective again. It wouldn't have been a buzzword for me until about a year and a half ago and then all of a sudden I've really enjoyed reading books that feature detectives and different types of detectives so one example is The Agency for Scandal by Laura Wood, where this is a ladies detective agency in the Victorian period. And is kind of like Enola Holmes crossed with Bridgerton. Bridgerton's out today, I can watch it as soon as I finish filming. Yes! And then I've also got a couple of sort of detect paranormal detective type books. I've got Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder by T.A. Holmberg. T.A. Wilberg, and one that I literally downloaded yesterday, which is The Undetectables by Courtney Smith, and the tagline purely sold this book for me, because it was like, be gay, solve crimes, take a nap. <laughs> sold. And then the final box that we are looking at in this bingo board is Faye, which again, is very hit and miss. Up until two, three years ago, no? Up until two years ago, I did not enjoy reading Fae books. I really struggled to find ones that I liked. But I then read these hollow vows. I read these these hollow vows by Lexi Ryan, and I really enjoyed the elements of that and the different Fae dynamics. And I've talked about this series quite a lot. So again, it's probably not a surprise that I'm mentioning it. I don't know why it's not in my favourite shelf. It needs to go on the favourites is the Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning that deals with Fae and Fae Hunters Hunters, and is just so good and I love the cast of characters, I love the dynamics and I love how the main character goes from someone that you absolutely hate and almost want to lose to the best character ever. I just love it. That can go on the favourite shelf. And then ones that I need to read but physically in front of me that I'm not throwing on the floor, I have What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Wood kind of reluctant with this as well because I think Faye are one of the biggest ones for being super smutty and again one of my anti-words is smut. I, I don't mind if a book happens to have sex in it but I don't like a book where the primary goal is the sex and I find that a lot of Faye books do fall heavily into that sex thing and I'm like cool what's so magical about having sex with a fairy? They because they never write the smart with them using their fairy and magic abilities. They're just this random sex, but the guy has pointy ears. Big whoop. Anyway, rant over, but What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods. And I also have the sequel to These Hollow Vows, These Twisted Bonds, but I need to reread These Hollow Vows because it's been about three years since I read it. And so I feel like even though I remember the main things, there's some of the smaller details that I will need going into the second book. And that is it. That is the bingo board. <laughs> like I said, I'm giving myself a year to get through all these. As I said, I do still have more buzzwords and anti-buzzwords that if I had have added this, this would have been a 50 square thing. And I'm already doing a few big challenges. I don't need to be putting that much pressure on myself. So I've stuck with the 35. Let me know in the comments what are your, some of your buzz, met and anti-buzzwords. And... If you've got any book recommendations for any of the categories that I have written down here, that I've gone through here, please do let me know. In the meantime, I hope you're all good. I hope you're staying safe. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and my Etsy. And yeah, I hope you're all good. I hope you're staying safe and I will see you on the next one.